I'm here at a place called Porthallo, which is a quaint Cornish fishing village on the Lizard Peninsula, and it has some of the best preserved World War II defences in Cornwall, including this anti-tank wall. A simple, cheap and effective way of delaying any enemy troops landing on such beaches as here at Porthallo was to build a concrete wall. Measuring approximately 4 feet tall by 4 feet wide, the fact that it's still standing today shows just how effective it is. Following the withdrawal from Dunkirk, the British had experienced Blitzkrieg for themselves first hand and knew that if they could delay any enemy armour for even just a couple of hours landing here, it would buy precious time. Complementing the anti-tank wall at Porthallo is this pillbox, an unusual design built to enfilade the flank of landing enemy troops. It has the same construction as the anti-tank wall, made from concrete blocks, and it features three embrasures, two facing across the beach and one facing landward. The doorway faces the beach and originally had a lockable metal door in situ. Nowadays, the box is used to store fishing gear. As the war dragged on, new technology came to the fore, such as this, the now remnants of a high frequency direction finder position. Huff Duff, as it was also known, would catch radio signals as they were being transmitted, and from there, the operators would be able to identify if they were friend or foe. It's thought that HFDF contributed towards 24% of all U-boat kills during World War II. Here is what a HFDF site looked like during the war. I went off in search of a lost piece of history, a quick fire or starfish site, which was rumoured to be located somewhere near Nair Point Headland. After searching for nearly an hour in undergrowth, I put the drone up and found it. These sites were highly secret, and what remains is the control bunker, which featured a control room and a generator room. Quickfire sites were decoys, utilising the surrounding fields to create small fires and flashes of lights to lure enemy aircraft into dropping their bombs away from the intended target, in this case, the port of Falmouth. This site last swung into action in late May 1944, when the Luftwaffe targeted the build-up of supplies, ammunition and men amassing near Falmouth for D-Day. Falmouth was tactically important during World War II. It was from here Operation Chariot was launched, the successful raid on St. Nazaire, and motor launches regularly left here ferrying SOE agents back and forth across the channel. Less than half a mile away from the decoy site was this huge pillbox which I spotted from the coastal path and having no way of getting to it, I sent the drone up and took some photos. This box is actually a mega observation bunker with another bunker inside. Small observation slits afford a prominent view out across the approach towards Falmouth. With the knowledge of such a seemingly poorly defended beach at Porthallo, I visited Kennex Sands, a sandy beach with plenty of room for landing troops and equipment. I was informed that originally there were two pillboxes here, one which has been destroyed since the war, and the other which fortunately still stands today. I found it nestled up on the cliffs overlooking, much like Porthallo's box, the landing beach from the flank, thus affording more arc of fire. It is, however, woefully exposed and wouldn't take much punishment. It is, however, in good condition, almost free of rubbish, and even boasts the maker's initials on the roof. Similar to Porthallo, Kennex Sands also has the remains of an anti-tank wall as well. A short journey over to Penzance brought the opportunity of visiting another type of defensive location, 
this torrent, vertical rails. These squares are still visible in the road surface today as ghostly outlines, but when required during World War II, the local home guard would slot metal girders into the slots, lock them in place, thus stopping, albeit only for a short period, the advance of enemy armour. The answer as to why the numerous potential landing sites in Cornwall are so sparsely defended can actually be found in Somerset and Dorset. The Taunton Stop Line, as it's known, is a series of defences running from the mouth of the River Parham all the way down to Seaton on the south coast. This line would be the main line of defence should Cornwall be invaded and would seek to delay the enemy advance as much as possible whilst the mobile defence reserve force could be brought up and into action. Thankfully, Britain was never invaded during the Second World War, and as those who lived and fought through the conflict begin to pass, these buildings survive to tell the tale. If you've enjoyed this video, please hit the subscribe button and like and comment. If you want to learn more about British military history, and in particular World War II defences, then hit the link below and join our Patreon.